you better hold on to your private keys because this story is going to freak you out. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you had a great weekend. You know what? I, I was actually going to do a, um, a video clip on the, uh, the Bitcoin ETF options, because obviously now we're starting to see a lot of commentary out of uh, different people in the space. And of course, you know, at some point I wanted to give my take on this. But then I ran into this story um, from Zach XBT. And for people who don't know who Zach, uh, Zach XBT is, uh, he's uh, he calls himself a uh, an on-chain sleuth. Um, and he essentially does a lot of uncovering of nefarious stuff that goes on um, in the crypto space. If you're not familiar with Junseth, uh, most recently he has been getting called by a um, essentially a social engineering scamming group that is essentially trying to steal his, you know, his Bitcoin. And uh, he's been releasing these these audio interviews that he's doing with these people. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because this story that Zach XBT uncovered uh, sounds exactly like one of these working groups. And so anyways, without further ado, let's dive into this story, okay? We're talking about two people that were charged with stealing over $230 million in Bitcoin from a victim in D.C., now, I just want to point out, uh, you'll see as we go through this story, it's more than just two people that are involved, but these are the two people that they've officially charged, okay? A according to the research done by Zach XBT, it seems that there was four or five people that were actually involved in this whole scheme. Anyways, guys, a Florida resident and California resident were accused of working with others to steal the $230 million in crypto from a DC victim. Since August, officials said the 20-year-old Malone Lamb of Miami and Los Angeles, also a Singaporean citizen, and 21-year-old Jindil Serrano of Los Angeles used different methods to access and launder funds from a D.C. resident's Bitcoin account. Both were arrested Wednesday night and appeared before the U.S. District Courts in Southern Florida and Central California on Thursday. The pair used online aliases like Anne Hathaway, Versace God, and Skidstar worked with others to contact the victim and later fraudulently gain access to the victim's multiple Bitcoin accounts. Now, switching over to Zach XBT's investigation, let's dive into his summary. So, on August 19th, 2024, the threat actors targeted a single Genesis creditor. So, for the people who don't remember Genesis, right, uh, Genesis... Digital LLC uh, went and filed for bankruptcy in January of 2023. Okay, so just, just to put that into perspective for the people who do not remember who that is. Anyways, let's continue on. So calling as a Google support via spoofed number to compromise personal accounts. Calling after as Gemini support claiming account is hacked. Social engineering the victim into resetting their 2FA and sending Gemini funds to the compromised wallet and then got the victim to use any desk to share screen and leak private keys from Bitcoin Core. Guys, this is, this is so nasty. And it, it's like, from what I just explained to you, right, this was multiple vectors of attack. This took multiple people. And if you have been listening to these Junseth interviews uh, with some of these people, you know that this is exactly how they work. Everybody has their specialty. Okay. So, and as you'll see, as I explain the story, um, you know, you've got one person who's responsible for simply just calling, right? Just calling the potential victim. And then you have other people working in the background, essentially guiding these callers, telling them what to say, what to look for, and what to do. Um, yeah, this is really, really scary stuff. Anyways, now what's pretty amazing here is that Zach XBT got a recording, okay? A live reaction from when they actually stole, at the time, the two hundred and thirty eight million dollars let's have a listen oh, wow. Wow, no, way. Way. no fucking way i see it bro. it's on the blockchain it's on the blockchain bro. Oh, no my fucking god. way nigga. oh my god oh my god no fucking way yes 
Holy fuck, nigga. Oh my god! Oh my god! Bro, bro, I'm gonna spaz out! Yo! We're done! We're done! Okay, we're gonna stop right there. Now let's continue with what happened. So you can see, right, these guys are obviously very surprised and impressed with themselves. Um, they just essentially stole uh, life-changing money uh, from somebody and are obviously very excited about it. Anyways, so an initial tracing shows the $243 million split multiple ways between each party before funds quickly peeled off to 15 different exchanges, okay? So now one of them here known as Wiz or Veer, received a large percentage cut from the theft and slipped up during a screen share by leaking his full name during the theft. Wiz's friend, Light Dark Akash, helped launder the funds for him using uh, EXCH and Thor Swap. Similar to Wiz, he leaked his name during his screen share. All right, so now we've got two people uh, that were involved with this that, that leaked their names. So... For the people who are wondering whether these are sophisticated hackers or not, they aren't. These are a bunch of script kiddies, okay? Throwing whatever they can at the wall to see what sticks. Now, another one of the accomplices here, Grievies or Malone, right? Which is one of the people that was actually caught and is facing criminal charges. So he lives a flashy lifestyle with stolen funds, having purchased 10 cars and going out to clubs in LA and Miami with friends, spending 250 to half a million dollars a night and giving out bags to girls. Good job, bud. And during the video clips and in chats, multiple people refer to him as Malone and was flexing stolen funds on Discord. That's right. That's right. Because guess what? A lot of times what traps people is their ego, right? They See, it's not enough for you to know that you got away with something. You want to tell people about it. You want others to know about it. And believe it or not, this is our... This is our animal brain, okay? And more specifically, this is the part of our brain that essentially makes us seek social validation. Um, it's no different than a rich person uh, essentially buying boats, buying multiple homes and stuff like that. Because you see, this type of flex, what it does is it shows the other cavemen that you have so many resources that you can waste them. Now, uh, another... Th uh, Another interesting point to this is, is that people who often um, didn't actually earn any of their money, and when I say earn, uh, I'm talking about actually providing value and in doing so, um, multiple parties or another party or whoever it is paying you in kind for that value. When you live a life like that, okay, it, it's you're not just going to go and blow all of this money out the window, at least not generally, not the people that I've met, okay? The people that I've met that have actually earned their money through providing value quite often do not just blow their money out the window like this. People who have done absolutely nothing for this money or very little or gained their uh, their fortune through uh, nefarious means, they understand how quickly it could be taken from them. They understand how easily it came into their possession. And therefore, you're more likely to see a lot of people like this, number one, doing the peacock thing, wanting other people to know what they have. But number two, they have no respect for the money that they've earned. So they blow it out the window as quickly as possible. And I think deep inside, they know that at any moment, all of those dollars can disappear, kind of in the same way that they stole them from somebody else. All right, Grievies, or so you may remember, uh, is also this person known as Malone. Okay, so he was located in LA, Miami due to friends, girls posting his location on social media each night. He also has an Instagram account where he posted photos of himself using his name earlier this year. I think the I think the privacy advocates here are are not going to be very happy. But here we go. While most of the funds were converted to XMR, both Box and Wiz accidentally linked the laundering funds with the dirty funds on multiple instances. Wiz, during a screen share, showed an address he sent funds to for designer clothes, which had millions in expo in exposure to the cluster. <laughs> These guys. 
These guys are absolutely brutal. Anyways, um, and Zach, of course, uh, finishing it off with a shout out to CF Investigators and Zero Shadow underscore IO and the Binance security team, uh, where more than $9 million dollars has been frozen and half a million dollars has already been returned back after working closely with the victims to invest uh, with the victim to investigate uh, the incident. Awesome for Zach XBT. Uh, I, he is an account that I follow. Yep. I, you know, people go take a look. You, you know, he's, he's a shit coiner. Um, and he even talks about minting some shit coin uh, as a result of this, uh, this, this hack that was discovered that he worked on. But in all fairness, right. Um, regardless of the shit coining, he does excellent work. When it comes to these investigations, I believe that uh, I, I believe that his service is greatly appreciated. I could tell you I appreciate it. And you know something? Um, having somebody like this and having multiple people like this uh, that do this in the space, you know what? At first, it may not seem as a deterrent, but the more the more um, cases like this that Zach XBT uh, uncovers and exposes, right? Um, I think the more people who are going to think twice, possibly, you know, before pulling some, some grift like this. But again, I also understand the other side of this coin is, is that the money is just so difficult to resist. You guys saw in that video. I mean, you know, I, I don't think too many people really understand, like, you know, if you have zero dollars or a couple of thousand dollars and all of a sudden you have $238 million of purchasing power, right? This is more money than most people will see in their entire lives. Um, so th that, that can easily, um, that, that can easily bypass all of your logical circuits and thinking I shouldn't be doing this because the risk, right? The reward to that risk is so great. It's like, why not? Right. And then you start to think all these stupid things like YOLO. Now, one of the funniest things that, um, that I noticed as I was looking through a lot of these screenshots, which again, the, the link is going to be in the show notes for you guys to take a look at. But one of the things that I found most entertaining was this, this account, right? The, one of these, one, one of these scammers here, Malone, um, interestingly enough, he has like 37 followers on, on Instagram. And uh, essentially, if you think about it, like this guy wanted to post all of his fancy clothes and stuff for his 37 followers on Instagram. And essentially that was part of the, that was part of the information that was used to find him and track him down. <laughs> so, was the 37 follower clout really worth it? Anyways. Uh, yeah, that was definitely, definitely the funniest part um, of this whole thing. But look guys in summary. Okay. Um, I, I want people to understand what happened here. Not only did these people social engineer this person in DC to first divulge all of the information in um, in their trading accounts, right? The stuff that is held on exchanges, right? Counterparty risk, third parties that we don't control, but, but they used any desk. They connected to his machine for the people who don't know what any desk is. Any desk is a remote control service. Uh, there used to be a service like this once upon a time called PC anywhere. You may also know other services like this, such as team viewer. Okay. And something that's more localized. Okay. In local networks is something made by Microsoft called remote desktop. Um, and essentially what these applications allow you to do is it allows you to see and for the most part control what is going on um, on someone else's computer. So, so it was already bad enough that they stole all of this person's funds out of his exchange accounts, but they then hacked his Bitcoin core, okay, his actual wallet on his desktop. So this is, this is really freaking brutal. And it's not the first time I've heard of this, um, uh, because you got to remember something in these particular cases, these people aren't necessarily just going for one thing. They are looking to find anything that you have. So they may start off with the knowledge that you've got an exchange account, but once they're able to get into your computer, right. And control your desktop. Well, at that point, um, they can lead you down a path where essentially um, you're divulging a lot of private information. And again, um, believe it or not, believe it or not, the simplest way to 
If your name ends up on one of these lists, okay, and if you end up in one of these situations, the simplest way out of it is to simply stop, stop what you're doing and think, okay? And you can go like, especially, so look, for example, if you have an exchange account, right? Um, you most likely have an app installed on your phone. They're telling you that you've been hacked. Well, you know what? I would go and start the app on my phone. Nine times out of 10, there's going to be a notification. If something has actually happened, there's going to be a notification within the app. Okay. You're not going to get a phone call from these people. None of these exchanges call you. Okay. None of these people call you. Okay. And the other thing is this, when you're dealing with these people, quite often, they are asking you for information. Okay. I'm talking about, I'm talking about when you're dealing with a legitimate organization. Okay. You are providing, you are providing them the information in most of these hacker scenarios. Okay. What they want to do is they want to scare you but then they want to build trust with you. Okay. So you got to be really careful if they are giving you your information. I'm not sure if you've ever called a, I'm not sure if you've ever called bank support, but you'll notice that if you call your, your bank for support or anything like that, they ain't giving you anything. Okay. They're asking you for everything and to verify everything. Now, again, I'm not saying that that's necessarily safe either, but it is a good way to recognize that this type of thing is happening. But again, the easiest way to avoid any of this type of stuff, because remember, they want you, these people want you to make a time sensitive decision. Okay. So that's why there is a lot of pressure. Okay. But also at the same time, there's also the need to make a decision very quickly. So increase the fear, but also at the same time, increase the trust. And that way they can extract the information out of you as quickly as possible, all under the guise of, we are going to fix this sooner than later. And before you know it, you've lost everything. So guys, this is an absolutely crazy story. This is the fourth one now that uh, I've heard of in the last month, okay? So in my eyes, this occurrence is increasing. And, and in all fairness, right, um, as, as our purchasing power continues to dwindle, as prices continue to go up, I mean, if you think for a second that, you know, these millennials and Gen Xers, uh, sorry, and Gen Zs, that they're not trying to figure out how they're gonna make it, uh, you got another thing coming. Um, you know, like th this is the, this is low hanging fruit, right? They could spend, you know, the next decade of their lives working some garbage job, right? Saving money, doing things correctly, or, or they could just try to scam one or two people. And all of a sudden in their eyes, it becomes life changing. The problem is they're not going to be able to hold on to it. And they don't know it because they don't see the forest for the trees. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about. Stay vigilant. Be safe. I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. <laughs>